God dang, that was fast. What if I told you that riding a trail this quickly was all about understanding how to use your brakes? Well, by the end of this video, you'll learn how to slow down so you can ride even faster. Before we get started, we'd really appreciate it if you cruise down and hit that like button. And if by the end of this video, you feel like you learned something, consider subscribing to the channel. These things really help other people just like you see this video and potentially learn right alongside of you. It also lets us know that you're enjoying this content that we're having a lot of fun and working really hard to create. With all that being said, welcome back to Joy of Bike. I'm Mike. I'm Chase, and I am super excited to get into this video. Learning how to break with intention will completely revolutionize your riding and make you a far more confident, smooth, and speedy rider, which leads to more fun. So let's get into it. Over our combined 35 plus years of riding, we've seen and heard a ton of hoopla when it comes to braking. But in this video, we're gonna clear all of that up. Yeah, the first thing is beginners are often scared to use their front brake, which can lead to inefficient and uncontrolled braking and skidding. So we're gonna talk about how to incorporate your front brake confidently. We also want to get away from the idea that our brakes are used like an on off switch. We're gonna really cover how to modulate our brakes for the most efficient braking. And also another benefit of that is we're gonna get a little bit more life out of our brake pads. There can be a lot of nuances when it comes to this skill. So we're just gonna break this video into three parts to make sure we cover the most important information. That's modulation, body position, and the session. Well, you know what? I'll be gosh darned, we're back in the parking lot. And this is where we're gonna start talking about brake modulation. Braking is such an important piece to controlled riding and it's handled by such a small part of your body, your fingers, or really your finger. So let's talk about how to set ourselves up for success. We often see beginners think that two fingers is the most effective method, but really it's one finger that gets the job done best. When we use two finger braking, we have less control over the handlebar and we try to account for that by gripping onto the brake even harder just to regain that little bit of control. This leads to that on off button braking that Mike was talking about in the common misconceptions piece and switching to one finger braking allows for a lot more precise modulation in our brake lever, which leads to more control and better flow down the trail. So let's set our brakes up so that our pointer finger reaches the outside of the brake lever. This gives us the most leverage and control over our brakes. The angle of your brakes and the distance between the lever and the handlebar is often up to personal preference. So don't be afraid to play around with this and find what works best for you. Now that we're holding onto our brakes appropriately, find the bite point or the point where our brake pads make meaningful contact with the rotor. Squeeze until your lever engages. This is where all of your braking happens. Modulation comes from the amount of pressure you put on this bite point. Think of it like driving your car. There's two different ways that you brake. You're either gently braking to manage speed over time, or you're braking really hard to cut speed quickly. Braking on the bike is no different. Applying a little bit of pressure into this bite point is for speed management, while applying a lot of pressure into that bite point is where we get hard braking. Ride around in the parking lot to get an understanding of the differences between these two types of braking. Apply even amounts of pressure between your front and back brake and pay attention to how your bike and body react as your bike slows at different rates. Now, if you feel like you're being thrown forward, don't worry. We're gonna get into how to account for that in part two. If you've joined us for any of our other tutorials, you know that we love to talk about staying centered over the bottom bracket. Well, surprise, surprise, it's no different here. As we brake and our bike slows underneath us, physics tell our body to keep moving forward. This is often what scares people away from using the front brake. If we ride passively and too high on the bike, naturally the momentum will take our body weight over the bars. So how can we direct that momentum into our feet to stay planted on the bike and the ground instead? As we begin to apply pressure into our brakes, we wanna stay low on the bike and shift our weight back accordingly. The best part about learning how to do this appropriately is there is immediate feedback. If you're doing it wrong, your bike and body are gonna let you know. 
And if you're doing this right, no matter how hard you're braking, you should be leaning just far enough back to feel almost all your weight in your feet. A key piece of braking is riding in that centered position on the bike with a gentle bend in your arms and legs. If we're riding locked out, we lose our strength and will ultimately succumb to the force of braking, which will cause our body's momentum to keep going forward as our bike stops underneath us. Ugh. Dude, I'm a pretty experienced rider and that arms and legs locked out is like the most scary thing. So if that is how you're riding your bike, Stop doing that and I guarantee you it's gonna open up a whole new world of possibilities for you. For our first pro tip, I wanna talk about how to take advantage of your front brake. Now, as you get more comfortable with the basics of braking and understand how to adjust your body weight accordingly, start playing around with incorporating a little bit more front brake than you do back brake. Ideally, we want a ratio of around 60% front brake and 40% back brake. As you slow, all of your forces load pressure onto your front wheel and not your back wheel. This increase in pressure also leads to an increase of traction, which allows for more efficient slowing. And if you are appropriately adjusting your body weight to respond to the forces of your bike slowing under you, you shouldn't have any issues with flipping over the bars. Our second pro tip is a little bit more advanced and nuanced, so let us know if you want to see a full video dedicated to it, but we want to talk about when it's appropriate to brake. As a general rule of thumb, we want to brake when the trail is smooth enough to allow for it. Braking over rocky and technical terrain will keep our tires from rolling over those rocks and our suspension from responding to the bumps appropriately. Braking during corners leads to a loss in traction, which is the main thing that we want in those moments. Identify the best spots to do the majority of your hard braking on smooth stretches of trail before the technical sections or corners. And for our last pro tip, efficient braking requires solid traction, and solid traction requires good pressure between your tires and the ground. So as you're hard braking, you can load energy into your suspension and bike to improve the amount of traction you have for a brief period of time. Wait, are you talking about traction? Well, I guess this is a perfect time to talk about our coffee business, Traction Coffee Roasters, because without traction, none of these videos would be possible. When we're not hard at work creating these videos, we're hard at work at our coffee roasting location, which is where all of our coffee is roasted by riders for riders. And for a limited time, you can enjoy 30% off your first order by using the link in the episode description down below or by scanning the QR code right here on your screen. In your world, fun is the currency of effort. Enjoy pure, all natural fuel to keep you moving forward, no matter the task. For the doers, the fun havers, the all around go getters, fuel your fun with Traction Coffee. And when you support Traction, not only are you getting to enjoy world class coffee, but you're also directly supporting us in creating more content just like this. If you need a coffee recommendation, let us know down in the comments below and keep an eye out for a brand new Traction Coffee shirt drop coming soon. Now back to the video. Now let's put what we just learned to work. Identify a section or two on the trail to start having a session. And if you're strapped for time, of course you can just use a parking lot. Sessioning while applying these different braking techniques paired with correct body position will help you identify how to best brake while you're out riding. And before you know it, you'll go from thinking about how to do this as smooth as possible to it just happening thanks to muscle memory. You don't need to go fast during these sessions either. Learn how to control your speed and manage it skillfully, and before you know it, you'll be going fast naturally. Remember, speed should never outweigh skill. That's a recipe for disaster. Sessioning just like this is one of my favorite things to do on a bike. So speaking of a session, I think it's time for the joyride.
Well, I think we're gonna stop here. It's a breaking video, get it? Oh my goodness. But seriously, this is all we have for today's breaking video. However, breaking goes a whole lot more deep than this. So if you'd like to see an advanced breaking tutorial, hit the like button. And as always, if you have any questions or if there's any other mountain bike related skills that you'd like to see us cover in a similar fashion, let us know in the comments section down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for riding with us today. It was an absolute pleasure. You guys absolutely rule. Now get out there for your own joy ride. Later. Whoa, okay, before we get out of here, if you want to keep learning with us, click right here to learn how to ride switchbacks. And if you're done learning for the day, but just want something fun to watch, click here and join Mike for a sweet ride in Montana. Till next time, thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you on the next joyride. Okay, I think we can actually stop it here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to stop. <laughs> Again, it's a breaking video. Oh, no. <laughs>